Having learned to hunt with a falcon while growing up in the desert among the Bedouin, Sheikh Zayed never lost his love of falconry, as demonstrated by these photographs of the Abu Dhabi Falcon Hospital. In the days before oil, falconry wasn't a mere hobby. It was vital to survival, as falcons were trained to catch hares, small desert gazelle and birds, which were an important part of a very meagre diet at the time. These days, if no longer needed to put food on the table, falconry remains a favorite Emirati pastime, as well as an important connection to the country's Bedouin roots. This is thanks in no small part to Sheikh Zayed's efforts to preserve the tradition, which included founding the Falcon Hospital in 1999. I sat down with the hospital's executive director, Dr. Margaret Muller, to find out more about the tradition and how the impressive facility cares for these magnificent birds. The Abu Dhabi Falcon Hospital was established on October 3rd, 1999. And actually the land we have been built on has been given by Sheikh Zayed. It was his vision to create this hospital and this was the first public hospital for falcons in the whole world. So the idea was at that time to provide the best possible medical care for the falcons of the Abu Dhabi Emirate because there was no medical facility taking care of those falcons. Another idea was to raise the living conditions and husbandry conditions of falcons here in the Abu Dhabi Emirate, as well as to conduct research work. So this is how we started off, very, very small. In the beginning, we had just 1,000 falcons a year, but over those years, we have grown. We are now treating not only the falcons of the Abu Dhabi Emirate, but the whole United Arab Emirates, as well as the adjacent Gulf countries. And we have emerged as the largest falcon hospital in the world and the leading center for falcon medicine worldwide. Now, when we look at the history, uh, you can say most of the Emiratis were Bedouins who lived in the desert. And of course, the life in the desert was very, very difficult. It was a very harsh life. So actually what happened was that the Bedouins used falcons to hunt meat to let their family survive. So it has never been considered as a sport here, like for example in Western cultures like in Europe or in the US. Here falconry was a necessity for the Bedouins to survive in the desert. And of course also Sheikh Zayed was a Bedouin, I mean he also lived in the desert in his younger years. So he knew how vital falcons were to help the survival of the families. So falcons were never considered as a sports tool like in Western cultures. They had been integrated in the Bedouin's family like a child, like a son or a daughter. And by the way, until today, falcons are considered yeah, as the children of the Bedouins. They live with the family, they have their own place in the living room, often in the bedroom of their falconer, even in the car or the office, so they are part of the family. And this is also what Jezaid encouraged, to really yeah, look at falcons as a part of the family. In general, hunting is prohibited in UAE. You can hunt nowadays with a special license in a special dedicated hunting area, but still most of the hunting takes place outside UAE. And there is a specific time for it. It starts in autumn, usually August, September, and lasts until March, April, depending on the climate. Now, when we talk about this yeah, falconry, where you go for hunting trips, it is something which is very special. It is not just that you're hunting the favorite prey, which is the hubara, which is the great bastard, but also you have to see one point, and I think this is essential. When we look at, at Abu Dhabi nowadays and the whole UAE, they have been, you can say, catapulted from, from a very basic desert Bedouin life into a very modern high-tech life. Within the short span of only 50 years, it is a very young nation. Now this means that those former Bedouins also were moved from a Bedouin life into a very, very modern lifestyle. So falconry today is one of the very few opportunities for the former Bedouins to reconnect to their past, to go back to their own roots. And this means that today falconry helps to preserve the original identity of the former Bedouins, to preserve the values and to really reconnect with the past. And this is essential to understand because that's why you have a place like us. It's not just a hospital for birds or falcons, we are taking care of the children of the Bedouins. And that's why falconry until today is so important and why so much stress is put on to, yeah, to foster the culture of falconry even among the young Emirati generation because it helps them to preserve their values and identity. 
Now, when we talk about falcons, we talk about an endangered species under the CITES Convention. That's the Convention of International Trade of Endangered Species of Fauna and Flora, which means falcons are classified as a highly endangered species worldwide. So this means that, first of all, all falcons that you see here in UAE are nowadays captive bred falcons. These are not wild falcons like in the old days because UAE signed this convention in 2002 and from that moment onwards it was not allowed to keep any wild falcon here in UAE. So all the falcons that you see all around here are captive bred falcons. They come from captive breeding centers. So that's very important to understand. And this means also the falconry that we are having here doesn't have a negative impact on the wild population because they're all captive bred falcons. That's number one. And then as you mentioned correctly, we talk about the falcon passport system. And that's special because falcons are endangered. So this means if you want to travel for hunting to another country, you need export permits, you need import permits. So there are a lot of documents involved to travel with one falcon. So that's the reason why the United Arab Emirates have invented as the first country worldwide a passport for falcons. And that's the same passport like you and my passport. It is a pure travel document. It has nothing to do with vaccination books for dogs and cats. This is purely for travel. And when we talk about travel, we talk about something very, very special because falcons are the only animals in the whole world that are allowed to board the passenger cabin of our Arab airplanes like Etihad Airways without a transport box. This means that falcons are traveling like you and me as normal passengers. And they are not sitting in one of these cat carriers or, or boxes. They are sitting with you and it can happen to you when you are here at the airport in winter time and you travel to one of those countries where yeah, the falconers go for falconry. A falconer comes, has his falcon on his fist, walks into the plane, sits down next to you, just ties the falcon on the seat. They just have their little hood on and that's how they go. I told you before that in previous times, the falcons that were used here for falconry were wild falcons. So the Bedouins trapped them in autumn, used them for falconry during the falconry season for around half a year, and then those falcons were released again in springtime. So it means it was a kind of sustainable falconry because you took the falcon, but you released it back to the wild. And when we talk about falcons, we talk about something very special in the animal world because in falcons, the female falcon is one third taller than the male. This means all huge, big, beautiful falcons that are used for falconry that can really catch and carry heavy prey are females. <laughs> and that's why it's so important. And now we come to the falcon release program. When Shezaid realized that the falconers tried to keep the falcons over the summertime, he understood that this is not going to work out because of the climatic conditions here. We have uh, high temperatures, we have high humidity. That's not a suitable climate for falcons. So he told his falconers, donate your falcons to me, to this falcon release program, and then I will arrange to take those falcons to the main migration route. So this means those falcons are closer to home. So it's much easier for them to fly back to their original breeding grounds. So this was the idea, to collect those wild falcons, to return them back closer to home, you can say, so those falcons could start breeding again in the coming year because we talk mainly about females. So this means you didn't have any detrimental impact on the wild population because you took, but you returned them back. And this is very important to understand so that Shezaid had this vision and he had the understanding not just of taking care of falcons here in Abu Dhabi and UAE but also to take care of the wild population, to support the wild population and actually to increase the wild population. So this was the main idea. So when we talk about falcons for the falcon release, we talk about purebred, sacred and peregrines that are having wild origin. So captive bred falcons will not be released in the wild because they wouldn't be able to survive and they don't have it genetically mapped where to fly to. So this means this program runs until today and Abu Dhabi Falcon Hospital has the medical surveillance of this program, which means whenever we receive 
falcons, for example, wild peregrine or sacred falcons that have been found as an injured bird or that are donated from somebody, we put them in this program. First of all, we rehabilitate them, we check them, we rehabilitate, and then actually we place them in this program. And it's a very intensive program for them because we need to be sure that only 100% healthy falcons will be released. Otherwise, they don't have a chance to survive. So whoever is 100% medically fit and physically fit, because they need to have strong muscles, they need to have a good stamina, those falcons will be selected for the release program. If they're not 100% fit, they will wait for the next year's release program. So they will be trained for one more year and then they go for the coming year's program. And this program has been hugely successful. More than 2,000 falcons have been already released in the wild. And just to give you two figures, which are absolutely stunning. We had released one falcon, a peregrine female, and she flew in only six months 17,000 kilometers. Just think about it, a falcon of around one kilo weight is able to fly 17,000 kilometers in such a short time. It's absolutely stunning. And the falcon that we tracked longest with a satellite transmitter was a sacred female, and we were able to track her for five and a half years. And the stunning part of it was that every time during the breeding season, she returned back to her origin original habitat and she stayed there for the breeding time. So we can really firmly assume that she was breeding, having chicks, and then only when all the breeding period was finished, she started moving again. And in the coming year, she returned to exactly the same location, which means this was her breeding ground. It is absolutely stunning to see what a visionary Jezayed was because to understand not just the way how falconry works here, but to understand the cycle of nature and of falcons in the wild, it was absolutely amazing. And actually, we really owe Jezayed so much even until today with regards to the Falcon Release Program, with innovation about falcons and falcon medicine, even to have this wonderful hospital, which is unique of its kind in the world. So we really need to understand that Sheikh Zayed was yeah, so much more than just a falcon, the president and the founder of the UAE. He was really a visionary who built all of this and he built such strong foundations that these foundations will keep on and they will actually live forever. And they have made Abu Dhabi and UAE the cradle of falconry and falcon medicine until today. It's amazing and clearly helped along by you. So what I'd like to know is how you got interested in falconry and what brought you to this amazing, <laughs> it's such a niche profession and so interesting. I always liked birds. I, I was always amazed by falcons, but of course in Germany, you are not really getting into contact with falcons. So when I studied veterinary medicine in our avian clinic, we always received those falcons and raptors for rehabilitation. And that's where I first got in contact with them and I simply fell in love with them. You know, I looked into their black black eyes, it was like magic, it was like a virus that caught me and never let me go. So I actually specialized in falcons during my studies and I did my PhD on falcon medicine. And in 2001, they called me here from the Abu Dhabi Falcon Hospital and said, we have a job for you as a veterinarian. So I came here as a veterinarian. I was the first Westerner, the first female falcon uh, veterinarian and first veterinarian in general who went into this field. And uh, it was difficult in the beginning because the falconers were not used to it, so there was quite a lot of resistance. But over the years, yeah, everything became fine and uh, it has been a, a real amazing journey. And after half a year after I joined here, I became in charge of the hospital, which I've been ever since. And it was a wonderful opportunity to develop this hospital from a small clinic into a world-renowned institution. And. Um, to see where we are standing now and where we have started off, it was just an amazing journey. But we always did it in the spirit of Sheikh Zayed's vision to really not just only to focus on falcons of the Abu Dhabi Emirate, but folk falcons here in the UAE and the Gulf region. And also we have established a special internship program for veterinarians and veterinary students who come to us from all over the world to learn from us. We had so far trainees from more than 42 countries. And in the old days, of course, there was no hospital taking care of falcons. So the falconers also wanted to treat the falcons if they were sick. So what they did actually, they used natural recipes. This means 
they used natural treatment, sometimes even with henna or some kind of plant treatment. And when I did my, my PhD, I, I specialized in bumblefoot and falcons. It's a foot disease in falcons. So I went back until the first written sources in the sixth century about this disease and how it was treated. And part of it was in, in the Arab countries. And it is fascinating to see how good and how beneficial and useful a lot of those remedies were actually. Those medicines really worked very well and it shows already how advanced the, you can say, the Arab falconers were with regards to treatment. And it is fascinating to see and of course nowadays when I came here I have advanced it to a very yeah, modern high-tech level but in the same time we are using for example a lot of homeopathic medicines here and hugely successful and we can even see it when we do endoscopies how for example liver diseases are improving when we take blood samples we can see how the blood parameters are improving so there is so much strong foundation what the Arab falconers have done in those early days that kept on going I put my homeopathy plus all the modern medicines and it is fantastic to see because we shouldn't forget that all the falconry comes from the Arab Persian region, went only through the Crusades to Europe, where it had the high peak in the medieval times. And now actually the cycle is closing. And you can say the high peak of falconry came back to Abu Dhabi and the UAE. I mean, we are called a hospital and it is similar like a human hospital, which means, for example, the patient, in our case the falcon, comes first to our reception, gets registered, usually they have already a file with us, so we have files in the computer, everything is computerized, and then it depends what needs to be done. We have educated our falconers to bring falcons for preventive examinations, to be sure that we check them before they get really sick, or of course when they have accidents or yeah, kind of more severe diseases, they also come to us. But around 60% of the visits here are preventive examinations. And that's really amazing to see how it has changed over those, uh, yeah, you can say more than 20 years. In the same time, like a human hospital, we have large surgery facilities, we have a digital radiology, and of course we have intensive care stations uh, where we keep the critically ill patients. And then if a falcon needs to be hospitalized, we have a capacity to hospitalize 250 falcons at the same time here. And we have wards, like in a human hospital, they are yeah, differentiated according to diseases. So we have a ward for orthopedic diseases, orthopedic problems, we have a ward for bacterial infections, for fungal infections, viral infections, we have a special quarantine area. Uh, so it's, it's really, yeah, like a real hospital actually. In the same time, we also have a hotel for falcons. So when owners are traveling or they are not able to take care of the falcons, they can keep them with us. We just take care of them. And then also we have huge aviaries where we keep falcons during the molting time. That's the time when falcons change their feathers. Falcons change their feathers every year for half a year after the hunting season. So it starts in March, April until yeah, August, September. And in this time, falcons are not used for falconry or hunting. So this means they stay in these free flight aviaries and like this, they stay fit, healthy and strong. And this works out very well. Please tell me just the highlight of your time here or a couple of highlights and wonderful stories you'd love to share. Just anything more that you'd love to share from your incredible I think time here. I think one of the main highlights was when I was blessed to meet Sheikh Zayed. Uh, I met him actually and it was incredible. You know, when I met him, I could really feel and experience this amazing charisma that he had. And when I spoke with him, it was like I was in a bubble just with him together alone. And it was so amazing. And actually the words he told me and the spirit he gave me, this is something that had been, yeah, motivated me to keep on to develop this hospital in his yeah, vision, in his spirit. And honestly, when I met him, first of all, I understood how he built UAE, how he was able to build such an amazing country and to build the foundation to bring all the Emirates together as a united Arab Emirates. And in the same time, I could feel this love and his passion for falcons and falconry. And this is something which had such an incredible impact on me. And, and truly, I will never ever forget this 
this meeting that I had with him in all my life. I think even when I'm 80 years old, I will still remember it because it was an incredible experience and I'm so blessed and so humbled that I had the opportunity to meet him personally. This was something absolutely amazing, absolutely fantastic. And the second one was when I got Abu Dhabi Award from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed uh, bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the president of the UAE. It was for my efforts for the hospital and it was also because I found the first new disease in Falcons, now I have discovered two and created the avian influenza plan for the UAE. So it was also something which was so beautiful and so heartwarming and that's actually also one of those very special experiences in my life that I will never forget and I will be forever grateful to His Highness because it's, to receive Abu Dhabi Award is such an, an honor and it is also such a motivation for me and such a, a commitment to do more than I have received here, to really give back so much more than I can do and that's extremely important for me and in this spirit of yeah, Sheikh Zayed and Sheikh Mohammed, I have tried to live up and to build this hospital in the end that yeah, it is something they, they could have been proud of. And you can also feel how strong she is when she's putting her in. 